My name is Ayanda, a lifelong resident of Johannesburg, a skateboarder and a big fan of urban spaces. One of the things that I've always wanted to do is find better ways for us to integrate skateboarding into city spaces. For us to understand this a bit better and how skateboarding ended up in city spaces, I think it would be good for us just to have a quick little refresher on the history of skateboarding. Skateboarding's origins can be found in surfers who, wanting to recreate the same feeling of the ocean that they would find in the water, but on concrete, decided to find a way to design boards that would mimic the movements, the feel, the flow of the surfboards on concrete. And that's where the idea of skateboarding came from, this came about. Initially skateboarding actually happened on the banks, uh, so these angled stuff where the people were able to create the flow of the waves like I've mentioned and then slowly from them it moved out from the banks and into abandoned skate pool or sorry into abandoned pools found in neighborhoods. Now if you look at a lot of old visuals on the history of skateboarding you'll actually see that there's a lot of visuals where people are actually inside pools and I think for the 70s to about 80s that was the most popular perception of skateboarding. From here and once people realize that you can actually skate vertically, <coughs> meaning that you can actually lift up the skateboard with your own feet, there was a lot of people who were adventurous enough to be like, okay, how do we take this from the swimming pools and actually take this into the city? And that's where the idea of street skateboarding was born. And that's where also the relationship between city spaces and skateboarding has begun. Now traditionally, and for the longest time, and I think still to this point, there's still a very negative relationship between the two. What I hope through this video that we can do is just to help change perceptions about how we can integrate skateboarding into city spaces. One, two, also highlight and identify some of the benefits of actually having skateboarding in city spaces, which, you know, there is a, couple, there is a few of them. And thirdly, just also to change a perception of looking at skateboarding or skaters as problems, but rather see them as city users who have rights to um, the city. So behind me is Jewel City, which is one of the city's newer inner city developments. What I really think is super amazing about this is the amount of inclusivity and the amount of multi-use the space has behind us. Uh, not only are people able to sit and relax around here, but as you can see in the background, uh, there's some young kids skateboarding around. And the pretty cool part is that the actual management of the place has allowed skateboarding to happen in the space here. What I think is really great about this is that the management has identified that there was originally a skateboarding culture within this area over here. So while they were building and designing the place, their question was like, how can we integrate the existing culture into our development? And this is what we see uh, over here. So going back to what I had mentioned, it's not that hard to actually design for skateboarding. Uh, once you know one of the few things that's needed, you know, flat surfaces, one or two stairs over here, some ledges, it's pretty easy for you to be able to design uh, and integrate skateboarding into your design of course i would love to see more of this happening also with government stuff because this is private property but that's a discussion that we can have for another day uh, but this is just super cool to see that there is some private developers that are willing to listen uh, and understand that like how do we integrate existing culture specifically how do we integrate skateboarding what's also amazing about this space is that even if the skateboarders are not here anybody else is allowed to use this space so just speaking to the greater sense of like how do we make our cities more inclusive once again it's a case of like how do we bring in all the different role players there's the waterworks over here behind me on a hot day there's always a lot of kids playing around here uh, there's a shopping mall just up the road sorry uh, and then we also have the the apartments behind me so a proper multi-use space uh, that has been designed thinking about lifestyle not just necessarily one specific thing not just residential not just business but rather the people that will be here how are they going to utilize and use the space and in terms of once again how do we make our cities more inclusive 
let's look at it from that way. Who are the people that use the space? How can we design and integrate for them? And I think Jewel City has done absolutely amazing when it comes to designing for the space. So let's hope uh, in future we see much more collaborations like this where the skateboarding community, um, you know, the business community, the development community, the government all comes together and we're able to create multi-use spaces like this. They are safe, they are clean, um, and you know, those are the two most important stuff that you really want whenever you're creating a shared space. One of the stuff that I found that really helps people um, understand skateboarders more is actually understanding who and what skateboarders are. So I know a lot of the times there's a lot of stereotypes surrounding skateboarders that they are rebellious, that the guys um, just are full of uh, anarchy or you know they're anti-establishment and while in some parts this is true uh, I do really think that as skateboarders there's a multitude of different personalities and people that you will uh, find within skateboarding so I definitely think one of the ways we can get over the stigma is by more people engaging with skateboarders so that either means going to the skate park or just simply meeting a skateboarder out on the streets chat with them and what I've generally found is that skaters are some of the most friendly people uh, always willing to listen help uh, help you or try and understand and get a better sense of who you are as a person uh, and also gives you an opportunity to learn about um, skateboarders more. They are not just what they do, they're actually full human beings. Uh, so very nice, good idea to try and engage with um, with skateboarders more. So after engaging with um, skateboarders, the one thing that um, I've learned or one of the stuff that um, you know I picked up from having discussions with people who have more experience when it comes to skate urbanism uh, is this idea of skateboarders, skateboarders having a right to the city as urban citizens. Um, so as I've mentioned before, this notion that skateboarding is bad for a city and therefore we need to look at it as a problem uh, what I would suggest is that let's rather look at skateboarding as a solution um, to know how we can activate disused spaces solution in the sense that skateboarding attracts a whole array of people so instead of simply saying that because these people skate over here let's move them to the skate park how's about asking yourself why do these people skate over here and what can we do to help um, you know promote this culture or what can we do in any sort of way to bring people into skateboarding um, I do know that the skateboarding will be an Olympic sport um, actually and one of the things that I've actually thought about which I think uh, is very important to how people perceive skateboarding uh, is that one because skateboarding is going to be an Olympic sports I am a bit afraid that people will perceive skateboarding as a sport which then means that the general follow-on to that will be because it's a sport it needs to be have its own specific purpose-built skate park where people can go and practice it as a sport um, as happy as I am for skateboarding to be Olympic sports I think will bring great credibility to the sports more uh, visuals and also just bring it to a greater and much bigger audience um, I do um, hesitate a bit so that it does not just completely get lost in translation that skateboarding is just a sport therefore it has to be in skate parks we need to also consider the fact that there are street skaters who utilize city spaces like I've mentioned before in that context what I would like to um, also have people think about is what are the sort of benefits that skateboarding brings into an urban or city space uh, I think one of the big stuff that a lot of people you know have realized or that you'll pick up even if you're not a skater is the ability of skateboarders to activate abandoned and dead spaces so whether you drive around your city uh, whether you drive around your neighborhood you normally find skateboarders in like these random spots you know either an abandoned parking lot one uh, an abandoned building or a very dodgy looking uh, area so by bringing skateboarders into that space one what you're doing is you're creating or bring just more people into that space and almost by bringing more people into that space uh, you know sometimes or one does expect for if there's any criminal criminal element rather if there's any dangerous elements there by just having people physically there in the space that drastically reduces um, you know the crime in that space and does make that space a lot more safer Another benefit um, of having just skateboarding in your city space is that when we look at future cities, I think one of the big things that a lot of cities want is to be a lot more diverse uh, in terms of the people that are able to utilize the city. Uh, also just more diversity in terms of how many um, activities are allowed inside these city spaces. 
skateboarding in and of itself brings a huge array of diversity simply because of the different characters so you have the actual skateboarder who will be skateboarding uh, number two you have the guy with the camera or the filmer uh, you then might also have three somebody that's maybe a graphic designer an artist who's there um, you know to doodle or to just draw so in terms of creating greater diversity in city spaces I do definitely think that skateboarding has got a lot to bring in terms of the cultural capital uh, of, a, of a city space um, you know and just increasing that pool of diversity that's found in city spaces and your typical or your traditional um, city city users um, yeah so just tying all of this uh, up in terms of you know skate urbanism and how we can create more inclusive cities um, instead of deciding that skateboarding needs to only be done in skate parks you know I definitely think there's space for that however I do think that by bringing skateboarding into the attention of the public more and more people will be able to see what skateboarding is and will make it easier and more accessible for people to actually engage with it which will then help break down a lot of stereotypes surrounding um, you know skateboarding and what people think it's meant to be what people think it's not meant to be um, what I would like to see moving forward is for there to be a much better relationship or a greater conversation between skateboarders, city officials, um, you know, the local municipalities, also private individuals or private uh, companies or private developers. Uh, and we all come together around the table to be like, okay, here's this activity that we have happening in our space over here. What can we do? Um, you know to accommodate or what can we do to help create um, a growth or what can we do to help this activity just um, grow the space instead of being like okay we don't like what's happening here it needs to be removed and that's the idea with skate urbanism the idea that like buildings or futures or rather cities of the future are able to integrate skateboarding or different other types of elements into their city planning and the city design we do have very good examples if you look at the city of malmo it's been done very well over there also if you look at the city of copenhagen it's been very well done over there where if you skate all around the city or move around the city you find these different little skate dots uh, a skate dot is simply a space where there's a skatable obstacle. It's not purposely built for skateboarding, but you are allowed to skate over there. Uh, and what also, from reading a bit more about that, I've realized is that once you have city officials um, almost helping to legalize skateboarding, you do then see a bit of a change in the general public in the sense that the general public will follow the laws that are created by the government or city officials. So if skateboarding is banned, a lot of the public will have a negative attitude. Whereas if in spaces where skateboarding is allowed, you generally tend to see that the public is more open and you know less restrictive or um, less prohibitive when it comes to engaging with skateboarding. So yeah, um, skate urbanism, um, you know, future cities, let's try and be as inclusive as possible. Um, skateboarding is a fantastic activity that can be done in street spaces. There's so many benefits, as I've mentioned. Um, there's the physical benefits, you know, there's psychological benefits, emotional benefits, even economical benefits. Once you have skaters in a space, of course, they're going to buy food from the local cafes, the local stores, from the street vendors. Um, so, yeah, let's, um, yeah, let's look at skateboarding as an urban activity. Uh, instead of looking at it as a problem and yeah, let's create these amazing future cities with skateboarding in mind.